Poor, poor Bob and Eliza. Have they ever been happy? It seems there's nothing one can do to please the other. Just what is keeping this couple together? Or conversely, what is the spark that will finally drive them apart? What's up guys, Rakowski here, and today we are bringing the Sims 4 Pancakes family into The Sims 3. Before we get started, if you like fresh content on The Sims 1, 2, and 3, don't forget to like this video and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Also, if you think that there's a Sims 4 Sim that deserves a little extra love and care, let me know in the comment section down below. We all know EA isn't going to get around to it. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Welcome to the speed build portion of this video. So usually for my speed builds now, I'm breaking it into two parts. So the first part is like the speed build portion, and I try to keep that nice and quick and condensed. And then the second part, we actually jump in and do a little bit of a tour. Don't expect too much from this thing. This house is a little bit intentionally ugly. I'll give you the rundown. So basically, the pancakes are the only Sims in The Sims 4 that like I can even get invested in. But since I can't really get invested in that game anymore, I thought I would bring them into The Sims 3. They have a good kind of backstory, well, as good as you can get from The Sims 4 anyway, and I tried to kind of bring it into this game. I know I can pick more traits, so I was able to expand it a little bit. I, I, I certainly didn't follow any of the lore in the alternate timeline, whatever. I just kind of made up my own, but I didn't like change the story completely or anything. I didn't even really add to the story. I just kind of built them this EA style house and just gave them the traits that I thought that they would have, and I just want to see their marriage fall apart in this game, you know? Know? So Eliza, we all know her from The Sims 4 as being materialistic and snobbish and she wants to be rich, which is not really the most likable personality, right? But then on top of that, you have Bob, who is like lazy, doesn't care about anything, like the exact opposite of her which is also not really desirable in somebody. Like, you know, normal people, it should be a good mix. And these are the two extremes. Neither one is likable. And that's kind of what makes them good Sims. Because I don't like when Sims are just like, oh, we're this happy family. Obviously, the pancakes aren't. Okay, so now the house is starting to come together, so I can start to talk about that a little bit more. I just went with a simple shape. I really liked the roof. I liked doing the gabled roofs to off, off to the side like that. I thought it looked really nice. I kind of copied it from a house I saw earlier. But this is built in Twinbrook, and we haven't done a review of Twinbrook, but I've played a lot in Twinbrook, and the houses are not the prettiest thing. And I wanted this to kind of blend in. So I kind of went with this suburban style, but I am not good at these kind of houses. Look at me struggle with the floor plan. Actually, I cut a lot of this out because I didn't want to waste your time. I couldn't figure out where to put the bathroom. It was going to be two bathrooms, but that didn't end up happening either. Because this is also a starter home. I kind of moved them in with the 19,000 that they would normally have. And I thought, yeah, I can build a house. Do not build a two-story starter house in The Sims 3. This is awful. Poor Eliza is going to be suffering in squalor. But that's kind of what I wanted anyway, I guess. I just wanted it to be like a nice, simple starter house that they kind of overspend on because they don't have a lot of money either right i don't know where they get the money in the sims 4 but as far as i'm concerned they should start off pretty much broke well maybe not rags to riches broke but like starting sim broke and when you build a house like this is about half the size i'd say of their sims 4 house and it has way less stuff in it than their sims 4 house and it just blew the budget so she's gonna have to put up with a crappy lounge chair instead of a sofa i did i even afford a tv I think I put a TV in. It might be the cheapest TV, but I wanted it to be like an old fashioned style, like having the lounge in the front, then the dining room, then the kitchen in the back. So that's why the bottom here is in three rooms and it's not really big of enough of a house for that. I thought I built a big enough house. In The Sims 4, this would be big enough, but not in The Sims 3. And I also really wanted to do like a basement or something. That didn't end up happening either because it was too expensive. That and basements are really tricky in The Sims 3, because especially if you have foundations. Like I chose a foundation, so I kind of got screwed over with the cellar. It would be easier to do like a cellar kind of off to the side of the house, but that doesn't make any sense either. But again, I couldn't afford it. So instead of a second half bathroom, I decided to put like a single bed in this empty tiled room just for Bob. It it's six tiles big, three of it's the bed. So again, don't get too excited. Bob doesn't have anything to do either, so he'll have to get a job or something. 
I kind of went with this like brick on the first floor and then siding on the second floor. I see a lot of houses like this around where I live. Certainly not with this weird porch that I'm kind of designing. Again, I was just making it up as I went. And my goal lately is, especially since I've been reviewing so many EA builds, I like to build in the style of EA now. And I don't know why, and I'm sorry if you liked my pretty mansions from like a year or two ago, but I'm just in love with ugly lately and I can't stop. And I, I've kind of noticed that's a general consensus, at least in my, in my build reviews, because I can be quite harsh at times. As you can see here, I'm carefully picking my colors with the color wheel. That's something EA doesn't do in Twinbrook. But since I am so critical, a lot of people say, oh, I like that ugly thing. And I just think about it sometimes and I'm like, yeah, me too, actually. I like that ugly thing, because sometimes it just adds a little bit of diversity to the world. Because if every house was like perfectly pretty, like imagine a save file with just blue Suburbans, right? Like it just gets too monotonous. No matter how nice and cute and pretty and everyone lives in this perfectly nice little decorated home, what a boring way to play. So I also figured this would be like a little bit of a renovation challenge for me as they get money. I'm not sure what I want Eliza to do, since this is built in Twinbrook, I'm thinking of the Ambitions careers, and I'm like, hmm, stylist. Because a lot of the Sims are kind of style. Well, I shouldn't say that. The Sims are, like, they look pretty good for the Sims 3 Sims. But I just find that, like, once in a while, like, a hairstyle would just be better suited, changed up. Especially when you're playing with more than one pack. You're playing with some extra hairs that didn't come with the uh, with this pack, for example. You can, you can kind of fancy them up a little bit and kind of change up their clothes. Plus, if you screw it up, it doesn't ruin the world. I kind of want to do the architecture career, but that's my favorite career. But I, I, again, like if I'm not paying attention, I can ruin Twinbrook so easily. It's already kind of ugly, so just a few bad mistakes, it's not going to go too well. Yeah, so the bathroom is upstairs. If I do one bathroom in a house, I usually don't do it upstairs. Because that's where, okay, every house that I've ever lived in, it has the bath, if, if it has two floors, the bathroom is only upstairs, which is a pain in the butt sometimes. But I'd rather have it next to my bedroom, I guess. Speaking of which, Iggy is in this too, their son, because he was added in The Sims 4 base game or whatever. I figured having a kid always adds to a Sim family anyway, because it just gives you an extra little thing to take care of, right? I'm talking about it like it's an object, but at the end of the day, it's the truth. And I just thought it would be a little bit more fun to try and get rich while having to take care of a kid, take care of a loser husband who's sleeping down in that. See, you can see a single bed behind the stairs there. I love it. But yeah, the furnishing, do not get excited because I look at the look at how many simoleons we have left. What, what do we have? 705. This is not going to go well. You might see me cheat a little extra money. And that's not really because I was cheating. It's more because I kept kind of play testing and turning and like turning on live mode. So things would depreciate in value and change the value of the house. I kind of went for if you look in the top corner there, it's got furnished and unfurnished. I'm going for about like 19 to 20,000. I think that's fair because in other games, they would start with 20, 20 22, 24,000 for three Sims, right? But in this game, you start with 1650 for one Sim, so it's just, you, you get a good chunk less and things are more expensive. So I think just the concept of starter houses is more fun in The Sims 3, in my opinion anyway. Because in The Sims 4, like, I can build like a three or four person house, no problem for like 20K, as long as I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Even as two stories, I've done that before. Not in The Sims 3, it was awful. The windowing too is tricky because again, this is not my style of house. I I build either tiny houses, like little eco lifestyle-y shipping container house, or like a Victorian mansion. So to do something that's a little bit more in the middle is not really my forte. I did some of them when I was building in The Sims 4 back in the day, but I just, I can't really get into them either. Because if I have a really small build, I can put so much care and detail into every little square inch. And if I have a mansion, I'm just going for like a big statement. But you don't want a family house to be a big statement because then it's ugly, right? I don't know. Oh my God, that blue wallpaper. I hope I don't keep that. I forget what I did because I built this a few days ago. Usually for my speed builds now, I like to build them kind of when I'm feeling uninspired or 
even just like little camera shy, just kind of hit record and build behind the scenes a little bit. And then I kind of look back on it and get excited and think like, what was I thinking? What was I feeling? Because it's just like any creative process. You have to be in the mood for it. And sometimes when the mood strikes, I just want to be in the dark and building. Sure, I'm sure some people can relate to that. So this is Iggy's room. We have like no money left. That's when I did cheap more money in. As you can see, the value of the house is kind of flying up and down. I go outside. I think I deleted the porch light so I could afford a teddy bear it's not looking too good and if you also notice I have not painted the walls yet so none of the walls are painted at this point I have 315 simoleons and I'm trying to give Eliza kind of like the bedroom of her dreams like the cheapest version of it possible this furniture is very Eliza pancakes and it's not too expensive so I was trying to draw from the original Sims 4 house but again I just couldn't do like that statement pieces inside their house because she doesn't have the cash for it. I don't understand why her Sims 4 house is so nice. It's actually one of the nicer builds in the Sims 4 base game. Not the outside, the inside though. I like the kitchen. I think it's like black and white and stuff. I didn't do that. I just did like a normal country kitchen and I used the brick from the outside on the inside for like the backsplash because I figured that would be like the cheap way to do it. Instead of tiling your kitchen, you just strip off the drywall and it's like, ah, oh, we got brick back here. It's fine. No problem at all. Good God, I almost, used, I almost chose that yellow wallpaper in the bathroom. I think I just went for like simple browns and like simple white and pink and just kind of went with those base game kind of colors, right? Because there's certain shades of colors that I find are just... They just remind me of the base game so much and they're not so much, well, they are kind of ugly, but they're also kind of just simple and basic and familiar. Because if you have, I don't know, if you have like the same kind of tone of wood and a few furniture swatches and they're cheaper and they and they end up in all the starter houses, it just kind of gives it that EA vibe. I think the last thing I changed, you'll notice all the doors are white. This is not working because I went for this more of a, like, a dark brown wood. I went too dark in the beginning. I think this is the right balance. Uh, I chose a better blue wallpaper, I guess. But yeah, then I had these white doors because I was imagining it kind of like a house like mine. You can see my door back there. It's just like a white normal door and I have dark brown floors. So I thought it was going to work. It wasn't really working in The Sims. So we just kind of changed it all up, pretended it like it never happened. But of course, I recorded this whole thing and shared it with you. So I'm not really sure what I was on about that. But let's just jump into the house and do our little tour and see what we ended up with. See you there. Well, welcome to the gorgeous pancake residence. Actually, come to think of it, it's kind of the color of pancakes. Oh, we got Bob and Eliza here, not facing each other as usual, but that's okay, we can just ignore them. I didn't do any landscaping for this build either. I'm usually all about landscaping and terrain paint and stuff. I just couldn't be bothered and they didn't have any time or money. I had to leave them a little bit of simoleons to survive. But sometimes EA doesn't do landscaping either, so... Okay, coming in the front door, we have a gorgeous grand hall with the staircase up here. I actually don't hate it looking at it in first person. It does look quite realistic. I made this kind of octagonal hallway, which I thought would be a little bit Victorian. So that way we can go into the three rooms. So behind door number one, we have a blue living room with just a bookcase, just a plant. Oh my goodness. I figured that Eliza could have the pink chair facing the TV and Bob can kind of sit in the corner in this beanbag. And I picked those colors for the beanbag because it actually blends into the room and then you don't see it in here is the dining room which is i think even though it's boring and basic this looks like their relationship you know dark and dreary and then we go into the kitchen i don't hate the kitchen i'm so glad i can afford a smoke alarm because i've had so many fires in the sims lately it's not even funny and back here is bob's room which was supposed to be a bathroom i couldn't afford the toilet and the sink anyway so it just ended up being his little man cave Okay, coming upstairs, we're gonna go right into Iggy's bedroom. I felt so bad for Iggy because I could barely afford anything. I wanted so much more for this child, but I don't know, things aren't looking too good for him anyway. And then into the bathroom, I was able to afford the tiled wall, thank goodness. I like doing stuff like this. Even as little architectural details can really add to a build like this. And then into Eliza's master suite. I actually really like this. I think it suits Eliza Pancakes perfectly. And it's kind of just ugly enough to be realistic. She she also has exclusive access to the balcony, which is something else you have in The Sims 4. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to afford the easel or anything, so there's nothing quite to do out here yet. 
What did you guys think? I like to do little things like this, especially parts of The Sims 4 that I really love and I do miss a little bit, like the pancakes. I just wanna bring them into the games that I'm currently playing and kinda integrate them into what I'm already doing. And if there's any other Sims 4 townies that you think deserve a little extra love and care, let me know in the comment section down below. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And just to alleviate my insecurity, I'm gonna leave a couple of my better builds linked down below so you can see what I'm actually capable of. Oh.